Hello friends, let's understand the layers of capital maintained by the bank. As we know, capital adequacy requirements are extremely important for the banks because the banking business is about taking risk. The well-managed banks like the State Bank of India, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank and others maintain much higher level of capital adequacy than what is mandated by the regulators. For example, the regulators or the RBI has mandated approximately 9% capital adequacy for the banks, whereas the well-managed banks will maintain capital which is much more than the 9% as compared to their risk-weighted assets. If we look at the capital of a well-managed bank, we can look at it from the point of view of three different layers. The number one layer is the regulatory capital. The regulatory capital is the capital which is required by the regulator that the banks must maintain. For example, under Basel III criteria, the tier 1 plus tier 2 capital must be at least 9%, of which tier 2 cannot exceed 2%, which means the banks must maintain at least 7% tier 1 capital and they can additionally have 2% tier 2 capital to reach the overall minimum requirement of 9%. This is the mandated regulatory minimum capital which has to be maintained by all the banks in India. In fact, the similar criteria are apply, applicable for all the banks globally because Basel III standards are issued by PIS or banks for international settlement. The banks will maintain a capital over and above the regulatory capital because in the bank's management perspective when they do run their calculations they might say for example as against 9% mandated under Basel 3 and RBI regulations we will maintain 12% capital. The 3% additional is required in their case for ensuring the long term solvency of the bank. So they feel that in view of the possibility of losses we should have 3% additional capital so that we can absorb the credit losses if any. So above the regulatory capital they might maintain something additional which is called the economic capital. A well-managed bank will have in fact a higher amount of capital or higher percentage of capital than merely regulatory capital or the, the economic capital and that actual amount of capital maintained by the bank can be called as book capital or the capital that is reflected in the books of accounts of the bank. Why is this additional capital being maintained? The banks cannot go frequently to the market or to the shareholders to raise funds. So at one time, they will accumulate enough capital for their next two to three years growth at least. Because as the assets grow, the risk weighted assets will grow. Capital which they currently have might come down as a percentage of the ever growing risk weighted assets. Also, the higher capital maintained over and above the the regulatory and the economic capital layer will build a more trust about the bank in the entire financial system, which means the counterparty banks, the regulator of the Reserve Bank of India, the foreign banks as well as the depositors will pursue the bank to be less risky or a bank which is very well funded by the shareholders. Because of this, there are certain advantages that the bank will get. For example, they will be able to borrow from the market at a low rate of interest. They will be able to attract more funds by way of let's say CASA deposit or current account and savings account deposits which are the sources of lowest cost funds for the banks. So these three layers, regulatory capital, economic capital and book capital are very important to understand when we are looking at any well-managed bank and trying to understand their capital structure.